Well, hello and welcome to today's Bible reading and devotional. This is for Thursday, July the 27th, 2023. And uh, we will be getting started shortly here out of Genesis chapter 42. If you want to get your Bibles and open them, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified anytime content's added to the channel. Comment on these videos, like these videos, share these videos. And I'm still in Tennessee for the Connect Conference. I'm sitting out on a back porch here in Middle Tennessee. Uh, possibly could rain on us, so we might go through this a little bit quick. It spit a little bit this morning. And I'm the early riser in the bunch, so I'm up while everybody else is still sleeping. So uh, let's go ahead. There goes some kind of a bird over. Ed, I don't know my bird, so I don't know which one it is. Anyway, I will go into the postage stamp here. And we are starting. There we go. Genesis 42, Joseph's brothers coming into Egypt. So when Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look to one, look at one another? And he said, Indeed, I have heard there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there that we may live and not die. So it looks like his brothers were just kind of standing around, not really doing anything. And so dad had to step in here and, and uh, figure out the, the, a solution. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers. For he said, lest some calamity befall him. And the sons of Israel went to buy grain uh, among those who journeyed. For the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with the faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, where do you come from? So, you know, he's not going easy on them. He's going to play this out for a while. And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. But he said to them, No, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Your servants are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest is with our father today, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, "Is It, it is as I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. In this manner you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh you shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him bring your brother, and you shall be kept in prison, that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth in you. Or else, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put them all together in prison three days. Then Joseph said to them the third day, Do not, or do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house, but you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses. And bring your youngest brother to me, so your words will be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother, for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, and we would not hear. Therefore this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered and said to them, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy, and you would not listen? Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. But they did not know that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter. And he turned himself away from them and wept. Then he returned to them again and talked with them, and he took Simon from them and bound him before their eyes. And so now they're going to get sent uh, back to Canaan uh, as you know, part of the test. Then Joseph came and command, uh, gave a command to fill their sacks with grain, to restore every man's money to his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. Thus he did for them. So they loaded their donkeys with the grain and departed from there. But as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money, and there it was in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, My money has been restored, and there it is in my sack. Then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God has done to us? 
Then they went to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan, and told them all that had happened to them, saying, The man who is lord of the land spoke roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, We are honest men, we, do, we are not spies, we are twelve brothers, sons of our father, one who is no more, and the youngest is with our father, and this day in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me, and take food for the famine of your households, and be gone. And bring your youngest brother to me, so, that, uh, so I shall know that you are not spies, but that you are honest men. I will grant your, bro grant your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. Then it happened as they emptied uh then it happened as they emptied their sacks that surprisingly each man's money was uh, in his sack, and when they had and their father had saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob their father said to them, You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more, Simon is no more, and you want to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my son, my two sons, if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which, <clears throat> in which uh, you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. So he's afraid of losing all of his sons uh, here, especially his young one. Now, Joseph pulled a little trick that has been pulled through uh, the, uh, the centuries where uh, I think Joseph Stalin did this. He could speak a little bit of English, but he would use an interpreter to talk to somebody. That way, you know, in this case, they're speaking Hebrew. He's, uh, Joseph is speaking Egyptian or whatever it was they spoke. So I use an interpreter. He uses an interpreter. They speak in Hebrew. He's got a little extra time to think about his response while the interpreter gives it to him in English or in, in e Egyptian. Uh, Stalin would do that. He would, you know, say, say uh, President Truman's meeting with Stalin. And Truman would speak in English. The interpreter would give it to Stalin in Russian. But meanwhile, Stalin's had the extra time to think about his response. I think it was Stalin that did that. So it's kind of a tricky little thing uh, when you're dealing with languages to be able to do that. That's why it's always good to learn at least one other language besides your native language. <clears throat> Okay, First Samuel 28, and I see once again, I forgot to scroll the, um, the Genesis reading. Apologies for that. It's being away from home, it kind of throws you off your game a little bit. Uh, now it happened, First Samuel 28, now it happened in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war to fight against Israel. And Achish said to David, you assuredly know that you will go out with me to battle you and your men. <coughs> so David... Uh, said to Achish, surely you know that your servant can do what your servant can do. And Achish said to David, therefore I will make you one of my chief guardians forever. Now Samuel had died, and all Israel had lamented for him and buried him in Ramah in his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the spirits, spiritists out of the land. And the Philistines gathered together and encamped uh, at uh, Shunem, so Saul gathered all Israel together, and they encamped at Gibeah. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by the prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, in fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. Now, this has been prohibited in Deuteronomy. You are not to consult mediums ever. <clears throat> and Saul, as we have seen already, hasn't shown a whole lot of regard for God's rules or God's laws. So Saul disguised himself, verse 8, and put on other clothes. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, please conduct a seance for me. And bring me up uh, for me the one I shall name to you. And the woman said, Look, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the spiritists from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for me to cause me to die? So she thinks this is a trap uh, that uh, is, is being laid for her because Saul uh, had actually done away with all of the... Um, 
uh, spiritists and the mediums and that sort of thing. And I'm scrolling a little bit now. So she's very hesitant to do this. But Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, why, why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascend out of the earth. So he said to her, What is his form? <coughs> and she said, An old man coming up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped his face to the ground and bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul said, I am deeply distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and does not answer me any more, neither by the prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called you, that you may reveal to me what I should do. Then Samuel said, So why do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy? Now why are you getting me dragged into this? Uh, you know, the Lord's departed from you. You messed up. <clears throat> and the Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me, for the Lord uh, has uh, done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. So immediately Saul fell full length uh, on the ground and was dreadfully afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no food all day or all night. And the woman came to Saul and saw that he was severely troubled and said to him, Look, your maidservant has obeyed your voice. I have put my life in my hands and heeded the words which you spoke to me. Now, therefore, please heed also the voice of your maidservant and let me set a piece of bread before you and eat that you may have strength when you go on your way. But he refused and said, I will not eat. So his servants together uh, with the woman urged him, and he heeded their voice. Then he arose from the ground and sat on the bed. Now the woman had a fatted calf in her house, and she hastened to kill it. She took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread from it. And so she brought it before Saul and his servants, and they ate. And then uh, they arose and went away that night. So, uh, Saul, the the idea of once you are in a hole, quit digging. Yeah, he doesn't get that concept. He's just digging this deeper and deep. So, First Samuel twenty nine. The Philistines now are going to reject David. Remember, he's been hanging out with them for a while. Then the Philistines gathered together all their armies at Aphek, and the Israelites encamped by a fountain which is in Jezreel. And the lords of the Philistines passed in review by hundreds and by thousands. But David and his men passed in review at the rear of Achish. Then the princes of the Philistines said, What are these Hebrews doing here? And Achish said to the princes of the Philistines, Is this not David, the servant of Saul, king of Israel, who has been with me these days and these years? To this day I have found no fault in him since he has defected to me. But the princes of the Philistines were angry with him, so... The princess of the Philistines said to him, Make this fellow return, that he may go back to the place where you have appointed for him. And do not let him go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he become our adversary, unless he switch sides. For with what could he reconcile himself to, this, to his master, if not the heads of these men? Is this not David, of whom they sang to one another in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Then Achish called David and said to him, Surely, as the Lord lives, you have been upright, and you're going out, and you're coming in with me, and the army is good in my sight. For to this day I have found no evil in you since the day of your coming to me. Nevertheless, the lords do not favor you. Therefore, return now and go in peace, that you may not displease the lords of the Philistines. So David said to Achish, But what have I done? And to this day... What have you found in your servant as long as I have been with you, that I may not go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king? Then Achish answered and said to David, I know that you are as good in my sight as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the princes of the Philistines have said he shall not go up with us to battle. 
Now therefore rise early in the morning with your master's servants who have come to you, and as you uh, are up early in the morning and have light, depart. So he's basically telling them, get out of town before sunup. So David and his men rose early to depart in the morning to return to the land of the, uh, of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel. So you know, we don't, they don't trust him to go into battle because he has, after all, the Hebrew. We're going up against them. I guess this would be kind of like in the two world wars, not really trusting native Germans who are in America or the Japanese, something like that, where they, no, nah, we just don't want them with us. Okay, our next reading is Psalm 68. Psalm 68, the glory of God and his goodness to Israel, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, a psalm. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away, as wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad, let them rejoice before God, yes, let them be ex rejoice exceedingly. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, extol him who rides on the clouds by his name, uh, Yahweh, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. O God, when you went out before your people, you marched through the wilderness, Selah. The earth shook, the heavens also dropped rain in the presence of God. Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God. The God of Israel, you, O God, sent a plentiful rain, whereby you confirmed your inheritance when it was weary. Your congregation dwelt in, in it. You, O God, provided from your goodness to the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings of armies flee, and they flee and she who remains at home divides the spoils. Though you lie down among the, she the sheepfolds, you will be like the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with gold. <laughs> when the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Zalman. A mountain of God is in the mountain of Basham, a mountain of many peaks in the mountain of Bashan. Why do you fume with envy, you mountains of many peaks? This is the mountain which God desires to dwell in. Yes, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men, even the rebellious, that the Lord might dwell there. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loads us with benefits, the Lord of our salvation, Selah. Our God is the God of salvation, and to God the Lord belongs the, to God the Lord belongs escapes from death. But God will wound the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of the one who goes on in his trespasses. The Lord said, I will bring back from Bashia, I will bring them back from the depths of the sea, that your foot may crush them in blood and the tongues of your dogs may have their portion from your enemies. They have seen your procession, O God, the procession of my God, my King in the sanctuary. The singers went before, the players of instruments followed after. Among them were the maiden playing trembles. Bless God in the congregations, the Lord of the fountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin, their leader, the princes of Judah, their company, their princes of Zebulun, the princes of Naphtali. <coughs> Your God has commanded strength. Strengthen, O God, what you have done for us because of your temple in Jerusalem. Kings will uh, be present to you, will bring presents to you, rebuke the beasts of the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the peoples, till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Uh, envoys will come out of Egypt. Ethiopia will quickly scratch out her hand to God, stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms on earth, O oh, sing praises to the Lord, Selah. To him who rides on the heavens of heavens, which were of old indeed, he sends out his voice, a mighty voice, ascribe strength to God, his excellence is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. O oh, God, you are more awesome than your holy places. The Lord of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. And then our last reading will be Mark chapter 13 where Jesus now again is predicting the destruction of the temple 
uh, signs of the end. Then it was, as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, see that what manner of stones this building are here? And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another, and shall all shall be thrown down. He's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem that's going to happen in about 40 more years, about 70 A.D. The signs of the times here, he says, Now at that he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, and Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? Now, this is a lot of people take two questions separated by a conjunction. And so Jesus answered them and said, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the end is not yet, for a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places, there will be famines and troubles, and these are the beginnings of sorrows. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues, you will be brought before rulers and kings for my namesake. But for a testimony to them, and the gospel must first be preached to all nations. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given you at that hour, speak it. For it is not you who speaks, but the uh, Holy Spirit. Now brother will betray brother and death uh, to death, and a father, his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated for all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, let the reader understand, then though, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop go down to the house, uh, nor enter uh, and take anything out of the house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant, to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight be not in the winter, for in those days there will be tribulation such as not been seen since the beginning of the creation, you know, which God created until this time, nor shall ever be. And unless the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he's chosen, he shortened the days. And if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, here he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But take heed, I have, uh, see, I have told you all things beforehand. So this is the destruction of Jerusalem, and it's, according to Josephus and other historians, it was bad. The way that uh, the emperor, or uh, the general Titus, later emperor Titus, came in and just leveled the city. But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, but the stars of heaven will fall and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in great clouds and power in his glory. Then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest parts of the earth and the farthest parts of heaven. Now learn this, the parable of the fig tree. We talked about that uh, last time. When the branches have already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that the summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the doors. Now surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall by no means pass away. And I believe he's talking about the generation that he's talking to. But at the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son of Man, but the Father only. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, in the crowning, crowing of the rooster, or in the morning." Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping, that I say to you, I say to you all, watch. So talking about the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, or this now, I think he's shifting gears a little to his second coming. We don't know when that's going to be. So it's up to everybody to be prepared. And uh, that's what Stonewall Jackson, during the American Civil War, was asked how he could stay so calm in battle. And he said because his religion taught him to feel as safe in bed as he did in battle. He said, I don't know when my time is up. I'm paraphrasing here. 
God has a fix that time. My job is to be ready. And that's what it is for all of us, to be ready. It's starting to drizzle a little bit here. I'm feeling a few raindrops, so we're going to stop it here, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next video. I'm out.